pie. Looks crooked. Yeah, okay. Good book. Hi guys. Mmm. Are we gonna have a cameo? Uh I got I'm gonna show them. That's nothing new. So one of the things that's very important to notice we're eating, which is not rare. <laughs> we not eat rare. not all the time on camera. We eat when we have something to talk about. Maybe twenty five percent of the time maybe. Yeah. Sure. It doesn't matter. Or drink. I'm gonna continue eating. We're not smacking. And even if I was, I'm at home. So <laughs> what makes this meal interesting is this is our first year tending to and benefiting from having a garden in our backyard. So thank you to Gail Wells and everyone who helps her helps out with her. Mm -hmm. And for Freedom Thank Garden. You, Freedom Garden. Yeah. So we have a garden and this is the first produce from our garden. Like romaine. Like we did not go to the store and buy this. The Parmesan cheese and I don't have the Parmesan Caesar. Cheese. I have lemon juice, avocado oil, and hemp seeds. Yeah. No dairy. I cheated. <laughs> I cheated. It so it's a little, it. it's a little bitter. Well, you know, well, good conversation. The reason why it's bitter is because the romaine that we typically buy in the store is romaine hearts. So it's from the inner part of the green, which is the lighter part. So this and is healthier. This is healthier. It's a, romaine is a bitter green. It's a like super it. green, actually. I like it because well, it's from been, our garden. Yeah. So it's definitely a different flavor than what you would get on a Caesar salad or even romaine from a salad bar or whatever. This is green. This is what you would. So when we go into the store and we see the romaine lettuce that, um, you know, you put in your own bag. It's greener. It's on the side with the rest of the lettuces. That's romaine. It's just not the romaine hearts. I just like it because we actually picked it, <laughs> peeled it off from the outside, washed it, cut it, dressed it. Man. That was really a great First time. A great experience to have something you watch start from. So when we got it, we got our garden. We're like okay because they were all seedlings and they were looking a little sad so we didn't know what was going to happen and then there's a really big thunderstorm with all that lightning and stuff the day after or the night of or the day after we got our garden so our poor little lettuce our zucchini everything was kind of like was looking really sad and really beat up and really tired but we kept watering it, tending to it. And there's a lesson there. <laughs> What's the lesson? The lesson is don't judge your experiences too soon. You may be going through some things that you don't understand and you feel really weathered from and you feel really tired and you feel like you can't go on, but you still have to pour into yourself and allow yourself to be poured into so that you can blossom Are and you grow. To me? Are you? I'm talking to both of us actually because oh. you did this for me earlier. And we can still learn and get great so we can reap what we sow, reap the benefits of what we sow, both. Enjoy the <laughs> bounty of the harvest from which the seed, from the seed which you planted. Enjoy the bounty of the harvest from the seed which you planted. 
I did not marry him only for his words. But enjoy the benefit. bounty of the harvest from the seed which he planted. I it like goes that. either way. <laughs> yeah, it's a little harder to enjoy the Be bounty my, of the hey. harvest from the seed which you planted when that seed was nasty, dirty, evil, and yeah. But either way, you got what you get. You got what you get because um, that's what you planted. Can you but correct you enjoy it? it though? Well, maybe it's more of a sarcastic enjoyment. But mm. Maybe it's more enjoy <laughs> the bounty of the harvest from the seed which you planted on your ass. <laughs> but in and the flip side, you know, with a little bit of fertilizer, you know, things can improve. <laughs> well, that reminds me of what Will Smith said recently about. Not recently, but what? Yeah, scratch. I'm late. I saw something. Oh, you always wonder why I go off on tangents because you always interject stuff. <laughs> Will Smith talked about seeds by his children. Mm -hmm. How he let his children grow because he takes the farmer's method, meaning that as parents, when you parent, you have a seed, a child. You know, you water and you care for that seed and blah, blah, blah. And, but as parenting, you know, we all come from parents that may have traumas of their own or ways to tend the garden, tend to the child. And so we often take on those same practices. And he was just saying that he stopped the trauma or, you know, the programming of how he should wanted to raise a child, like to raise the child in like his image of where he wants the child to go and to push... And he was saying that in the gardener's sense, the gardeners don't do that with their crops. Like they plant a romaine seed, right? And they the ro they allow the seed is already what it is when mm -hmm. it goes in the ground. Right. So you just allow it to just kids. be just a, it's already is so what it is. The kids are already who the, they are supposed to be. That's what he was saying. Yeah. It's just. Now, I wish I had that information earlier mm -hmm. because I would have tried that. Well, we have been receptive to it. I would have tried that. I would have tried. Have? I would have because I was of the notion of being a parent and, you know, setting up guidelines and rules and about respect and Discipline things of that nature, and... like setting up those things. I was like, well, if they don't turn out well, if they don't turn out well, which we still, if they don't, no, no, it's just like, you if they I mean? don't turn out well and, you know, and, and don't exceed where we are, like as far as we're the baseline, if they don't exceed where we are or even meet where we are, like I was always thinking like, well, I can live with that because I tried to give them the tools and set parameters and things of that nature for them to just have like guidelines or, you know, just in the job of parenting, so to speak, right? Like, okay. What I wasn't willing to do was to just not do anything. Like, and just, oh, you want to stay up till 3 in the morning? Oh, oh okay, that's cool. Don't worry about like, it. Are you only 6 years old? Okay. I didn't want to err on that side. It'd be like, if they didn't meet the baseline of where we are or exceed it, I don't think I'd be able to forgive myself to say, man, see, I know I should have been, I should have been more, you know, uh, hmm. you know, lenient here or more, I should have been stricter here or whatever, you know, so... I would have I would have liked to practice that philosophy to just be like, yeah, whatever. It's but I mean, there are two sides to that, right? So, and it also takes it. It also points to the you never know if the journey is complete until the end of the journey. In that you don't know. You know your kids in your lifetime may be one particular way, so positive, whatever that path is, positive, not negative, whatever. But many times, many times, people make turns in their paths that are unexpected, and some people that have had a part in raising them may not have seen that. So if, if we did, no matter what, no matter what philosophy or theory or however we raise the kids, they could have gone one way or another, right? And then we would have seen that, we would have felt the way that we felt, 
but they could have also after we have left this earth made some type of change or maybe that change would have happened in you know the generation that they they bore after them so i mean there's there's many roads i don't know we yeah. can only say what we can do with what we have Oh, I get it. I mean, I only took what he said with a grain of salt because I'm just yeah, like, yeah. But what he said was it was a part. It was a powerful it was, statement. It was rich. And however, he, yeah. However, with that being said, speaking mm -hmm. of rich, mm -hmm. there are some privileges. Yes. In being wealthy of his stature, yes. In being wealthy, mm -hmm. right? Because chances that we may take with our children, mm -hmm. if they fail or what have you, that may be it. You know, we we don't we we don't have we you know that's it. We ain't got no right. So they, you see what I'm saying? No so trampoline. watching his children like you know grow and you know navigate and fall here or trip here, whatever. Yeah, can whatever, I borrow a hundred thousand dollars? They just have the and they may have their own money, but the right. bottom line is the positions that they in that they're in and the access that they have is because of their parents. Right. You know. Agreed. Success or find, you know success in, in succeeding, so I'm just saying they have resources to kind of get back on their feet yeah. at least to the minimum. Whereas I want to say everyday people, I don't want to say it like that, but everyday people like we have to kind of be more stringent and tough on them because it's like we don't get those same chances and we don't. Yeah, but that's also interesting because there's also a matter of perspective. So somebody in you know. His level situation, you know, may not think that way. Oh, you know, what do you mean? We didn't have anything handed to us. We worked for this. You know, our kids worked for this. Yes, they did. But I agree. they had some level or they had some ability to work for it and achieve it by way of some connection or network that you had. So, I mean, perspective. And sometimes, it, and I'm not saying that's... No, the magic key mm -mm. to things like because no, we've seen it work adversely too. The people that have everything, right, and it's just right, exactly. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm just saying his the whole thought of the analogy of parenting and farming, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. cool. It's just like I just feel like it is a cool analogy. Being who I was as a young adult, mm -hmm. learning from you know my mom's style of parenting and things like I, there were certain points where I just I felt like I, I'm doing the same thing and yeah. so I would have to kind of reverse and things of that nature so and when raising I like the analogy because when when we when our eyes are open to recognize that we have creative children it makes us at this point in our lives takes us take a step back and say okay we do. We need to. We need to see them as they are. Know that there's a plan for them, and guide them, assist them, give them that little cage like you put on tomato plants to make sure that they are <laughs> staying straight, and not falling over, <laughs> and not encroaching upon other plants. You know, and being nice to the other plants. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's you farm, but farmers have ways of controlling or navigating or assisting growth it's interesting because hmm, there are some parents who don't raise their children in that style i know many that are doing it now and that i grew up with that in the past just were kind of allowed to run wild like weeds like Without, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're talking about a crop or a vegetable, it's like, I'll just run wild. I'm just, just, just strangle that tomato plant there. Well, yeah, it's fine, baby. Like, the but world you know is what? yours. If it's fine that you say that. One of my favorite mentors, Mr. Jim Gerwin, always said, a weed is only a flower that someone doesn't want. That don't apply here. Sure does. No, it doesn't. Sure does. There, there are people that... Well, Put it like this. There are people right now that were raised in a particular no, way that like believe that. that the world is theirs. Right, but what I'm saying is that ain't no plant. To, to, but um, what I'm saying, you said the the you said the weed analogy. So to you, you may be. <laughs> I'm talking about life. I ain't talking. I know. Well, anyway, we about to, it's just we gotta cut it off now. That that don't apply here. No. No. 
I'm talking about people in, in the metaphorically speaking, there are some people that are think they're plants, but they're actually weeds strangling everything and oh, think yeah. that they're privileged, more of the privileged than the next plant next to them. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. I can see that. Oh, see, it's too late now. Well, we can keep going, upload this one to YouTube. Okay. But I mean, so I'm always looking at the other side. Just, I wasn't thinking YouTube. about it in terms of the weeds and the other plants. I was just thinking about it in terms of, you know, they let their kids run wild and do what they're going to do when they grow the way that they're going to grow. But in that analogy, one person may see that as just letting them run wild, but another person sees it as a beautiful thing that has been done and, and nurtured. Are we talking about the weeds or are we talking about metaphorically speaking? Metaphorically speaking of kids. I think it's fine to be to be an untamed flower or mm -hmm. weed or whatever. Like you go and seek out wherever. Right. I don't agree with that in the sense of when people are raised as children and turn into adults that don't that have been raised a particular way and then don't know how to be respectful of yeah, that, I, other yes. people's Yeah. You know, I won't say territory, but right. other what what other people are, or how other people grow, or how many people other people learn. Mm -hmm. Like that's when this doesn't work. That's out. when, yeah, that's, that's when, when you're I'm strangling saying. and you know becoming taking over. You know, like yeah. being in a meeting or something, and you know why you're. Oh, I did I interrupt you while you were talking? Like right. the floor is not yours. Like stuff like that. Like no home training. What they used to call it. I won't say no home training because some people are trained that way. Yeah. Some people are trained that way. The world is yours. The world is yours. Right? Whereas, huh. as a black man, growing up as a black child, I was always taught to respect other people. Yeah. Everybody. Sometimes to especially, the detriment of yourself. Yes. Many times to the detriment of yourself. Yes. And it's something that's just ingrained. And even as a black female, more so because... You know, you're raised to smile, say hello to everyone, and, you know, sometimes monitor your feelings and your words so you don't get viewed as something that you're not. So I get that. That's an, another unfortunate one. Yes. Prime example. Yes. The current weeds that are running wild right now. Okay. That don't know how to just mind their damn oh, business. Okay, yeah. That just encroach on everybody else's space without in the garden. Having the, without having the full understanding of what's going on. Right, that can. flower or that weed mm -hmm. now yeah, has yeah, a yeah. name that they yeah, don't yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a part of it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're black and you're at a park somewhere and somebody can make their way over to you to tell you that or ask you what you're doing there or ask you if you I need help. I saw something like that yes. the other day. You saw yes. that, the man sitting in his car yes, that's watching what I'm his three kids at the park. I didn't watch the whole thing, Me but either. I could see it literally unfolding without having that's to watch it. That's what I'm saying. Those are the weeds that I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, but why? What makes people do that? You know, What makes people make this presumption, this assumption that they're not supposed to be here. That's what the are they privilege. Doing? That's what why, I'm talking about. Why are they? Why are they here? It's my why? world. It's suspicious. It's, what? It, where is that suspicion? Coming it's my from? world. That's why, in my opinion, like it's my world. They've been taught that it's their world, and if something does not fit in it, they have to challenge it because it. The so how pull, come we uh, people pull up in our on our street all the time? Yeah. Or in our come to an area where you know, typically speaking, you know is. Um, you know, most of, like, let's say Martin Luther, let's just say, for example, Martin Luther King Park. Say we went to Martin Luther King Park, we're just hanging out at Martin Luther King Park. Mm -hmm. And I saw a family of, you know, um, a white family with their kids riding their bikes or in the stroller or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would never have the audacity, the ego, whatever, to say, um, are you lost? Yeah. Do you need help? It's, it's none of your business. Why can't people just enjoy 
wherever they are and be wherever they are. Why must it be a question? Why must their presence be questioned? Who gives you the authority to question? That's, you know the answer to that question. Ooh, yeah. Somebody's given them the authority, and then there's systems that have given people authority right. to do and say things too. Right. And then there are systems that support it and make right. other people think that they're crazy right. when they have legit, you know, challenges, you know, Right. Let's say, wait, I'm the one that's wrong in the situation? Like, like, well, how? Like, like how I called you, I called you, and I'm the one that's getting arrested. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, those are real situations. Like, so the system, mm. that's why, mm. shout out to Prince Poe. Prince Poe, um, one of my favorite rappers, man, from the 90s. With a group called Organized Confusion, his partner mm -hmm. was Pharaoh Munch. Um, like the first time I heard them was "Crush, Kill, Destroy, Stress" back in the nineties, and he was saying that he was saying that the good that's coming from what's happening right now, like he was saying, like people like saying, "I can't wait to get back, get, I can't wait to get back to normal," right? And he was saying like what we were living in was n that normal was was tragic like that normal we all got used to because that was the normalcy of how we operate but it shouldn't have been our normal mm -hmm. you know the way things are were you know what i'm saying like um because it wasn't liberty justice for, for all. all like it wasn't as much as we had our children not our children but children placed their hand on their heart and liberty and say like Everybody was living a lie, right? And so he was saying, you can't, the house was, the house was compromised. Like if you just look at the analogy of our country the as foundation. a house. Yeah, because the foundation was built you, on was, what? Was built on treachery, was built on Pillaging. inhumanity, mm -hmm. was built on injustice, was built on murder. Was built on economics over human beings. Was built on you name it. Just so he's saying, like, you can't go back into that house now. You can't go back into that house once you stood outside of it and see that the foundation is cracked. You got to tear down the whole house in order yeah. to repair it and rebuild it in order to make it a house that's worth living in. So you've been sealing up all the cracks, isn't? Yeah, you've been to... patching. You've been patching and ignoring it. Mm -hmm. From there's a leak. No, there's not a leak. Yeah, that's, you see, yeah, that's water damage. That's, that was that's not a leak on my head. That's sweat. That's sweat coming off my face. It's not a leak. You know, like, yeah. so, well, this the is the first two. conversation definitely took a turn that we did not expect. And, uh, As it usually does. Over our time. No, we didn't go over we, our time. We did exactly what we were supposed to do. We made a YouTube video. We with, made a YouTube video. Without planning to <laughs> and we'll you. probably edit a portion of it so we can put it on instagram uh -huh. and encourage people to come and see the full thing on youtube so with that being said true um whenever you watch this because it may not be today or tomorrow or next week um check out eatoffart.com um we have some artwork we have some t-shirts we have jewelry um, Thank you to everybody who really supported. Yeah, and you know what? And I'm I meant to tell you this, but there are more ways to support us than simply purchasing. You can share our page. You can share our products. You can tell people about what we're doing. You can join us on YouTube. You can like and reshare mm -hmm. or. So tired. Or share us to your stories. However, just share the word. Tell people about Eat Off Art. Tell people about Lex and Dries. Um, tell them about our events on Fridays. So we have a lot going on. Um, you know, our hope is that by sharing what we're doing and going through, we can help, assist, inspire. I don't know. Give somebody else another idea. Let some great things um, flourish and... I know this is and the continue. tail end of the video. Like, he, yeah, you haven't done this in a long time. What? 
another thing. This is telling the video. I meant to talk about it first thing, but I wanted to shout out Jana Reed. Yes. I wanted to shout out Naila Ansari. So why don't we, we're going to do another video for Instagram. Oh, that'll be the shorter one. Okay. We're going to do a shorter one. We're going to do another one okay. because we'll get right to it. But this one. All right. Salad in my teeth. Oh, really? I wonder if he's going to actually edit that out. For what? When have I ever edited anything? Except for one time the phone got cut off because I didn't put, do not yeah, disturb. That was just really interesting. Well, I can't see. I probably have stuff in my teeth too, but I'm going to make sure so. I, I don't talk so that you can see all of my I adventures. So. All right. Yeah, that was fun. Eat off art. Peace.